Hey guys, my name is Mark Harrison. I make travel videos and also tutorials on how to edit them. Today we're going over 10 Final Cut Pro workflow tips, tricks, shortcuts that I know you haven't heard of. I've previously made a video on my top 10 beginner tricks time savers. Be sure to check that one out if you haven't already. Okay, so maybe you've heard of some of the items on this list. However, I guarantee you'll get something from this video today. I'll even bet you a coffee that you'll learn something new. Okay, with that said, let's jump right into the video. And item number one is the two finger click timeline zoom out. So let's say you're deep in your project and you want to navigate where you are in the timeline, but you're heavily zoomed in. Instead of zooming out, zooming out, just double click and boom, you can see the beginning and the end of your project. All right, let me show you that again. Double two finger click anywhere. And there you go, you can see the beginning and the end. Okay, tip number two, and that's paste above the storyline. So normally when we command C or copy and then command V, paste, it just ends up splitting our clip wherever we click command V, kind of inconvenient. So if we option V, then it pastes above and doesn't ruin and ripple our timeline along down the strip. So that's a really handy way to paste above. Tip number three, and it is social media cropping. So let's say we finished our project in horizontal and want a vertical version. Let's right click on here or two finger click. Select duplicate project as. Then here we go. We're going to click this drop down menu, select vertical. You can rename it if you like for a vertical clip. Then click smart conform and OK. So this takes a while depending on how many clips you have. So let's double click our new timeline with our new clips here for vertical cropping. And you want to click this button here and that'll show you what the computer has automatically selected or what the software has selected. So as we scrub through, you'll see it's just chosen what it thinks is the most interesting part of the clip. So sometimes Luckily it does a pretty good job. No on... So as you can see there, it's taking my face an example oh, yeah, here as well. Here taking Jordan's face or here's taking these two dancers. So normally it does a pretty good job selecting. So let's just zoom out a bit and make some tweaks on some clips. So here we have Felipe getting in the car. As you can see, the computer kind of missed it or the software missed it here. So let's just readjust it. Go to the beginning, click on keyframe, play to where we want to stop it, and then just adjust, drag it over to make sure that Felipe is in the clip. Adjust again, and let's see what that looks like. There we go. Much better. So here's another example of Jordan and I having a conversation <laughs> and the computer has done a pretty good job of framing us both in the clip. Tip number four is timeline safe speed change. So let's say we have our audio lined up perfectly with our entire timeline and we have this clip, but we think it's too slow. We want to speed it up. So we right click, click fast, I'm date and look, we've ruined the rest of our audio that's lined up with our timeline. So the way we fix that is we go on to custom, then uncheck ripple. Then we can make our speed adjustment. Let's say 800%. We click it and look, it has not affected the rest of our timeline and just our clip has sped up. So with this particular clip, it was really long and it had plenty of footage to fill in the space. However, if we have a clip that ends, as you can see there, has the red end, and we try and speed it up to, let's say, 2000, and there's not enough footage, it will leave a black slug in its place. So it will still preserve the timeline, which is very handy. Tip number five, and it is audio crossfade. Listen to this. Not good, need to fix it. Let's go up to Final Cut Pro, click Preferences, go to Editing, and where it says Audio Fade, let's select that to 1.5 seconds, nice and smooth. Now we're gonna highlight both of our audio clips and click Option T, now listen. Much nicer and smoother. So if we look into what this has done, expand the audio, is it automatically crossfades and overlaps our audio, saving us a bunch of clicks. This is what we normally have to do every time. Drag the audio, fade it this side, drag it to the other side, fade it this way. But instead, it's all nice and fast now. Let's just undo that. Highlight them both and click Option T. Boom. Beautifully quick. 
Tip number six, and that's to change our audio clip connection. So as you can see here, when our audio is connected to a clip, it provides limitations. We can't drag it above the timeline. Or when we try and delete a clip, it removes the sound as well. There, we just lost our audio. So the way we retie our sound effects or music to a certain video clip is we just press Command, Option, Click, and there you go. Command, Option, Click. We can put it over here, over here, to a different clip if we want, which is such a great option. Now we can adjust it and our audio remains. And now we can freely drag these clips above the timeline by pressing P and dragging it up and our audio remains intact. So another way to create a slug like that, as you can see that black slug, is normally we just click P and drag the clip above and we have that slug. However, if you just click Option W, there it is. That creates a slug or a space for you. Option W. So I would just like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Storyblocks. So I'm currently in Dubai filming for the tourism board, and the schedule is tight and the shot list is long. However, one thing that keeps the stress levels low is knowing that Storyblocks has my back. In case I miss a few drone shots or B-roll clips, I know there's a full library here in Storyblocks to lean on to support my project. For example, look at this aerial hyperlapse that would take at least an hour to prep and shoot. Or look at these clips of an empty Dubai captured while the city was locked down. Good luck trying to get that clip now or ever. Storyblocks has assets from anywhere in the world. For example, here, Bali or Hawaii. Let's check out Tanzania. It's got it all. Storyblocks, 1 million plus assets, affordable subscriptions, unlimited downloads, getting you back to creating more video. Click the link in the description for more. Tip number seven, assigning roles or color coding our timeline. So as you can see here, we have sound effects, but they are appearing the same color as the video clips. So let's color code these to the same color sound effects. Teal color, as you can see right here. So let's just highlight all of our sound effects here. Let's unclick that video sound. Right click, assign audio roles, click on effects, and you can see them drop down lower than the video sounds. And that's a much better looking, more organized timeline. So let's also look at a way to color code video footage. So let's say these three drone clips, let's color them by going assign video roles, click drone. And there we know that all of our clips that are drone shots will be red. So let's say we shot on another camera, for example, a Sony camera, we wanna assign video roles, go to edit roles. We wanna make a new one. So click this plus video role, type in Sony, and then hit apply. Then right click again, assign video roles, select Sony. You'll notice nothing has happened. That goes, we have to right click, detach audio, and there we go. We can change all of our Sony clips to red so that we can color correct all of our Sony clips differently. Green music, purple titles, blue clips, teal sound effects, a nice looking timeline. Tip number eight, and that's delete rendered files from finished projects. Look at this, 258 gigs. Let's cut that down a bit. So let's open up this library and click on the library title on the side, five things learned. Then go to file and delete generated library files. Select on delete render files, all okay. And now you can see the dotted line above our clips showing that it's not rendered. Okay, let's minimize and see how much space we've saved. Okay, over a hundred gigs saved. Time to go through those old hard drives and save some space. Tip number nine is shift H and shift N, hold in normal. All right, so this will cr basically create a fast freeze frame by hitting shift H. There we have a freeze frame. Introducing characters in your videos is a great use of freeze frames. Meet Jordan, the absolute freak. There we go. Okay, now let's say we want to make a bunch of speed ramps in our video. So this is not a good clip for it, but we'll just use this for example. If we make some bad changes and want to reverse those, we just go shift N and it's back to normal. Tip number 10, super simple, but it's a more appealing layout. So these sidebars, I always tried to minimize them and organize them like this, but I couldn't figure out how to slide the effects panel underneath. And all I need to do is double click. Okay, not there actually, above there, click. So it moves the effects panel over to the right, giving you more space in your timeline and overall better look. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new today. And if you didn't, well, then I owe you a coffee. But if you did, then in return, I'll accept a thumbs up and a comment below letting me know. But I mean, if you wanna buy me a coffee, then I won't say no. Anyways, catch you in the next one. Bye.